Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, guys. Stacy with me. Shalom. And in today's class, we're going to be talking about Hermes. Okay. We're going to be talking particularly about how it seems as though the prophecies given in Hermes point to the year 2021. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been doing uh, a series on the all of the prophecies that seem to point to the year 2021, and it appears that we can add the Shepherd of Hermes to this list. All right, let's, well, let's see how it goes along with it. All right, well, let's see. We're going first, we're going to start in um, first Peter and chapter 2. As it is talking about the stones that will make up the tower. You know about that? I know a little bit about that. Well, tell us what that means. What is it talking about? What is Peter, First Peter talking about? First Peter? Oh, I thought you was talking about the Shepherd of Hermas. Well, stones. you know, Shep, the Shepherd of Hermas just expounds on this. Mm -hmm. we, we hear about the stones in First Peter in these three verses are pretty much all we hear about these stones that make up this tower. The, mm -hmm. the uh, third temple, um, it says that we are lively stones or living stones. It's talking about us as stones, but it's in the separate of Hermes that we learn that it is our spirits that are these stones that make up this, this tower shaped temple, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So tell us about it. Well, in the Shepherd of Hermes, it talks about how there are 12 spirits. Twelve different types of believers. You're right. Well, each one of them represents, like you said, each one of them represents who we are. And these are the stones that has to, um, you have to have these stones. You have to have these characteristics in order to be a part of the tower. Yeah, well, we all have a stone, but we have to have, like you said, the characteristics um, of the perfected stones in order to be included in this tower. In other words, if our stones has flaws or chips or cracks or stains in it in any kind of way, then we won't be allowed into the tower. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's the Shepherd of Hermes that explains those flaws and even goes as far as tell us, you know, how it is that we're supposed to get rid of those uh, imperfections um, and makes it make sense to where we um, understand what we have to do in order to be considered um, uh, stones of the third temple. Yeah, well, we also have 12 um, characteristics also that's in every man that um, it expounds on in the Shepherd of Hermas. And they are painted as the uh, women that are in black. And it says that of those women that we will be able to see the kingdom, but we will not be able to enter into. Talking about those uh, powers, um, like the scripture says, we fight not against flesh and blood, but against, but against principalities and powers. So those 12 wicked women that you're talking about would be those powers that are uh, driving man to his own destruction. Yeah, they're opposite of the living stones. Well, you guys might want to go in and check out The Shepherd of Hermes. Stacy, you just actually bought a whole book called The Shepherd of Hermes, didn't you? I did, and it came in yesterday, and I'm anxious to get started reading it. It's sort of a different translation, but it says the same thing. Okay, so it's important that everybody get this Shepherd of Hermes. Um, if you uh, aren't familiar with our channel too much, you know we... Um, uh, promote this book. I personally believe that it is absolutely necessary for the survival of the tribulation. So go out and find you a copy of the Shepherd of Hermes, even if you have to look in the description of this video for a PDF version of it. All right, but in this class, we just want to talk about the timings in some of the passages of the Shepherd of Hermes. Okay. And we're going to go down here. We're going to look at them, starting in Visions two. What can you tell us about visions? Well, visions is like the precursor to similitude. Right. It's like a brief analysis of what similitude is about to be about. Yeah. So it's uh, Hermes who hasn't been prepared to hear from an angel directly is given a description of the tower shaped temple that we know now as the third temple in the form of a dream or a vision. Mm hmm. 
Well, when you look in uh, Visions chapter 2, it appears as though it is actually giving us a timeline prophecy. Like, for instance, when you look in at, um, matter of fact, go ahead and read verse 7. Visions 2 and 7 says, And as soon as I had finished what was written in the book, the book was suddenly caught out of my hand, but by whom I saw not. Okay, so now this right here is kind of part of my own testimony um, as we, you know, start this off because we're in the early years going all the way back to about 1998 to 1999 when I first read The Shepherd of Hermes. And I bring this up, you know, not because I think I'm unique or, you know, special in any way. In fact, I think I'm not. And I'm knowing that there are other people out there who will hear these prophecies these timelines and say you know that actually happened to me too back in the 1990s mm -hmm. well read verse 8 it says, after 15 days when I had fasted and entreated the Lord with all earnestness the knowledge of the writing was revealed unto me so this I believe is a timeline that Many of us who are on this journey when we look back in the 1990s and we see how in Hermes was introduced to us Speaking for myself, you know, I didn't really pay a whole lot of attention to the book of Hermes. Um, it was part of a volume of books called The Lost Books of the Bible and the Forgotten Books of Eden. And I read all of those books, not really, you know, slowing down or meditating on them at all. Um, I do remember Hermes being a very unique book. And I might have paused on it for just a second, but I was in a hurry to finish the lost books of the Bible. So I just continued reading on through and never really looked back until about 15 years later when it was kind of brought back to my attention in about 2014. Yeah, and for myself, I think I was introduced it by you where I, um, I think I started reading the book of Tobias. And after finished that, I just scanned over and saw the book of the Shepherd of Hermes and started reading that. And from there, we've been consistently reading it and learning from it. And like they say, hindsight is twenty twenty. So when we look back at you know our experiences in about 2014, it seems as though what we're reading here in Visions 2 was actually a timeline prophecy saying that this book would actually be revealed to us again and brought to our attention again and actually start to be become a part of our life in about 2014, 2015. So you're saying that there's a big significance to those 15 days. Those 15 days, I believe, are 15 years mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and a time span, you know, where, you know, we didn't really hear about Hermes too much. But that all changed in about 2014. But let's look at the next slide. This one is also related to 2014, but this one is pointing to when Hermes was actually supposed to start his ministry. Okay. If you would, go ahead and read uh, verse 95 out of Visions 3. For therefore, O Hermes, after three days, you must understand these words which I began to speak unto you, that thou mayest speak them in the ears of the saints, that when thou shalt have heard and done them, they may be cleansed from their iniquities, and thou together with them. See, now this is pointing to the year 2017 when Hermes Academy actually started. We had been, you know, reading over the book and, you know, since about 2014, but it was actually in 2017, in early 2018, when we actually changed our whole channel around to be focused on the Shepherd of Hermes. And that's why we started calling it Hermes Academy. So that was done in 2017? In 2017. And it was actually around the Revelations 12 sign in the sky. I don't know if you remember. After we saw that sign in the sky, you know, and everybody was kind of wondering what was going on around that time. It's when we actually started with the first online Shepherd of Hermes classes. I do remember that time, um, but I did not remember that 
And that was right about the same time. Yeah, I went back and I looked at those old classes from 2017. They actually, we actually did the first Shepherd of Hermes class on or about Tabernacles of 2017. Hmm, that's very interesting. Yeah, it's, it's real interesting when you start to think how our father was orchestrating that, mm -hmm. even in our unawares and not knowing that it was going on. Like we said, looking back, it's 2020 vision, and it appears as though he had a hand on this ministry. But like I said, I believe, you know, this, I believe there's other people who may or may not hear this video who went through the same thing. Their Hermes ministry would have started in 2017 as well. Right. Mm-hmm. Because notice how he's telling them to speak in the ears of the saints. Right. It says, after three days, which we believe is saying three years, you must understand these words which I began to speak unto you. And that would be the time where we're reading it and understanding it. And then it says that thou mayest speak them into the ears of the saints. Yeah. To, to me, this, this meant to actually teach it. Because, I mean, and it makes sense. Because... We understand that we, as far as knowledge retention, we retain about 5% of what we hear. If somebody tells us something, you can remember about 5% of it. Mm -hmm. But And you, you retain about 15% of what you read. Right. But when it comes to actually teaching something, that retention level jumps well above 50%. Maybe in the 75%, you actually retain that knowledge. And so that's why I believe Hermes was instructed to teach this information was so that he himself could learn it. Right. Mm -hmm. Because that's exactly what happened to us. Yeah. The more we tried to, you know, share this information with others, the more, you know, we got pretty good at, mm -hmm. you know, the knowledge here to mm -hmm. where, you know, that class we did on these uh, similar tools, that playlist we did on the similar tools, that's a pretty good playlist. People might want to go in and check that out. Yeah. Where mm -hmm. we went in and did a verse-by-verse -verse study of this entire book. Mm -hmm. But then before we leave this one, notice how it says that when thou shalt have heard and done them, they may be cleansed from their inequities and thou together with them. So even those who are listening to this, as well as us, from hearing this information from the Shepherd of Hermas, we will be cleansed of our inequities. That's sort of like a promise. Like, sort of like it reminds me of the book of Revelations. Yeah, why? Uh, you know, it tells you that when you read it, that yeah. you will get certain, certain promises uh, mm -hmm. from it. You're right, and we're actually going to see here in a minute how Revelation chapter 12, um, which we know corresponds to 2017, is actually related to this. And we could be talking about this, this cleansing process overlapping one another from 2000, starting in about 2017. Okay. But before we get over there in Revelation chapter 12, we'll look in some of the prophecies given in the Shepherd of Hermes in Vision 4. That seems to also be talking about the timing. This one seems to be talking about the timing of the tribulation. Okay, should I read Visions 4? Go ahead and read, yeah, go ahead, read Vision 4, verse 1. I saw a vision, brethren, 20 days after the former vision, a representation of the tribulation that is at hand. I was walking in the field way. Now, like we talked about before, these years. These days are actually talking about 20 years, and so it was about 20 years from the time when I was first introduced to the Shepherd of Hermes till about 2017, which is when the tribulation started. Okay. So you're saying that in 1998, you were introduced into the book of the Shepherd of Hermes. Mm-hmm. Okay, and here it says, 20 days after the former vision, a representation of the tribulation is at hand. Mm -hmm. So you're saying adding the 20 years is right about the time that the tribulation is starting. So from 98 to the 20 years equals 2017. Yep, and so when you look at the Revelation 12 sign in the sky and how it appears to be the start of the tribulation, not necessarily the apocalypse, which we're still kind of waiting on that, that what they call the great tribulation. But this all transpired, like you said, about 20 years later. But anyway, read verse 28. 
Wherefore, do not thou cease to speak these things in the ears of the saints. Here ye have the figure of the great tribulation that is about to come, which, if you please, shall be nothing to you. Yeah, so, and when understand from the fourth chapter in the book of Visions that Hermas was shown a figure of the tribulation and how it would actually affect the saints. Right. Mm -hmm. Like it says there, it will be nothing to the saints. Whereas the rest of the world will be going through a lot of trouble. The saints will be in kind of a protection period. Yeah, I like the part where it says, shall be nothing to you. <laughs> well, that's only because those who ha are keeping the, the patience of the Father have been in tribulation for a long time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they've been going through it already. So what it's saying is some of the things that would be hard for others won't be as hard for you. Imagine if everything you've gone through since 2017 was all of a sudden put on anybody else. And maybe they had to go through it in a shorter period of time, whereas you was given about three and a half years. What if they had to go through everything you went through in about three months yeah. or in three weeks? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that could get pretty severe. Yeah, mm -hmm. it would. I often think the father, and I know I haven't been through the toughest of situations, but, you know, sometimes we've had it pretty rough in my, in my belief. And I often thank the Father that if I had not have had, one, you know, the ability to fall back on him, and two, you know, the support of you and the children, I wouldn't have been able to, to make it. I would definitely have been then turned back to the things of the world. Well, the thing is, you know, when the rest of the world goes through this, they won't have the opportunity to turn back. And But the thing about, you know... The difference between you and the rest of the world is is that you chose to do it on your own. You know, you had to, you could have resisted, you could have fought back, you could have ran back into Babylon or Egypt and tried to get your life back, like the scripture says, you could have tried to save your life, but instead of doing that, you allowed the father to correct you and to turn you into the child that he wants you to be. But anyway, let's go on and look at the similitudes in chapter 8. What can you tell us about similitudes 8? Similitudes 8? That's the one about the rods. Oh, there's, there's a lot because one of the, thing, the things that I love about that chapter is that it seems to point out some of the flaws that I had and some that I still have now. <laughs> Yeah, it gives, like like you said up there in the previous verse we read, by reading this information gives us the opportunity to cleanse away those, stint, those sins, mm -hmm. those stains. And, you know, like, like they tell you down in the AA meeting, the first thing you have to do <laughs> is, you know, recognize that you have these flaws, right. you know, before you can ever, you know, admit to them and even be ready to cleanse them away. Mm -hmm. And so bring, so, you know, we can praise the Father for his word for even bringing these to our attention because some of those flaws that we read about over there in the Shepherd of Hermes, I didn't think they were flaws coming into this at the beginning. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, like anger. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought I was supposed to be angry, you, you know did. what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah you I'm did. a man. I was supposed <laughs> to fight back. And you said that a few times. I said it. I meant it too. <laughs> you know what I mean? I ain't scared of none of y'all. <laughs> that used to be my motto. I ain't scared of none of y'all. <laughs> but anyway, so we learn from the shepherd of Hermes, you know, that anger was a stain and praise the father. I have come a long way as far as getting rid of some of that mm -hmm. anger. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as far as what we're learning here is that there was a few verses that actually spoke to the timing of these last days. Like, for instance, you see right there in um, similar to 8 verse 32 and part of verse 33. If you would go ahead and read that. After a few days, we returned and in the same place stood that glorious angel and I stood by him. Then he said unto me, gird thyself with a towel and serve me. He said, 
Call those men whose rods have been planted, everyone in his order as he gave them. So if you remember in the Visions 8, it was all it was about these this willow tree and how the shepherd, the shepherd of Hermas, cut these rods out of this willow tree and gave them to every man. Mm -hmm. And we learned that that was actually the law. Mm -hmm. And the man, we, we were given the rods and we were given about three years, we're going to see here, to see what it was that we would do with those rods right would we keep them green and you know intact the way we were given to us or would we go off and mess our rods up yeah it turns out a lot of us actually mess those rods up yeah we let them dry out um and different things like that we let yeah. them get stained we let them you know get chipped and cracked mm -hmm. and broken and burnt and right. yeah well, the way I understand it, we were actually given these rods in 2014. You remember that tetrad we saw in the sky going on 2014, 2015? You know, everybody, you know, thought the second coming of the Messiah would take place during that time. Mm -hmm. Well, he kind of did in the form of this shepherd of Hermas. But instead of cracking the sky, we received these rods. So, are you saying it was an individual thing? Definitely was an individual thing. If you remember our own personal testimony, it was in 2014 that we actually discovered the book of the law. Mm-hmm. Right? Which is Exodus chapter 20 through 23. Those four chapters constitute what we know the, as the covenant. But it was in 2014 that I even discovered that book altogether. I had no idea that it existed. Or when somebody would have asked me what the law was, I would have replied that it was the entire book of the Torah, the first yeah. five books of the Bible. Mm -hmm. But it turns out that the law is not Genesis, Exodus, Deuteronomy, Leviticus, and numbers, but it is actually just those four chapters that you find from Exodus chapter 20, which starts with the Ten Commandments and goes through Exodus chapter 23, which talks about the covenant angel who will come and help us survive this tribulation. Well, I have to admit, I don't know if you know it or not, but once you when you started telling me about that book of the covenant, how it was just those few chapters. I didn't believe you and I actually started reading it for myself and that was just recently I was like convinced that no I think he got it wrong there but once you read it it actually makes sense that that few those few chapters is what he was talking about that are the law yeah, you see how when you look at uh, verse 7, it says, and he took the book of the covenant. This was actually how I discovered that it was a book of the covenant because I'm reading this and I'm like, what is the book of the covenant? Mm -hmm. And praise the father, it was discovered that it was the previous four chapters was the book of the covenant that he's actually talking about. And that's what we know today as the law. Well, when you say it was discovered, you know, I think you're being kind of easy on yourself because you do a lot of research when you make statements like this is the book of the covenant. You've done many, many, many hours and many days of research to make sure that this is, in fact, a true statement that you're putting out. So, yeah, I learned in my previous lifetime is that you don't if you don't make sure you have your information exactly right, you know, people will harm you with it. They'll take your flaws and ball them up and beat you with them <laughs> <laughs> so you got you got to be careful when you say something if you can't back it up you'd be best not to say it but anyway let's go home with our study here maybe you guys should go over and check out the book of the covenant after you read this like stacy said go in and read it for yourself so you'll right. be convinced that that is actually the laws, the contract that we're under right now. And that is actually the rules that our father mm -hmm. was giving us to help us survive this tribulation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But anyway, notice how it's talking about these few days here. So from 2014, and again, we have to use our own personal testimony for this. From 2014, when we discovered the book of the covenant and we received our rods, it appears a few years later those rods were actually inspected. 
In other words, when we got the knowledge of the Book of the Covenant, of course, the first thing we did was read it. Mm -hmm. So that's when we got our rod mm -hmm. in 2014. Okay. But then it wasn't until 2017 that our rods was inspected to see how what shape they were in. Where to they, see if they had buds or, yeah, you know. which if, they didn't. So this would be the time where we discovered the rods, but we did not have the buds and our rods was not according to what they should be. No, because, you know, I can't remember all of the details of the flaws of the different rods, you know, and I may be mixing up with the stones, which are very similar. But, you know, we had cracks. We had chips. You know, we had, you know, weak spots, you know, dry spots, dry yeah. spots, you mm -hmm. know, because, you know, even though we were reading the law, you know, it was taking time for us to actually learn to live in that law. Well, it's a new way of life for us. Definitely a new way of life, you know, because, you know, like we were talking about, you know, a few days ago, you know, we came out of that Paul and it came out of that Paul bunch. Mm -hmm. You know, we were thinking we were Gentiles. Grace and mercy. Yeah, we was in grace and mercy, law of liberty kind of stuff. Yeah. And we didn't think that the law actually pertained to us at all. Well, I knew it didn't pertain to me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you thought, but I knew it didn't pertain to me. I believe I was deceived too, <laughs> not knowing that the promises of the Bible are to inherit the earth. I thought the only option was to be raptured away off the planet and be gone. Right. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that, you know, there was a such thing as inheriting the earth. And so I thought that, you know, the law didn't pertain to me at all. Well, we don't hear about it in church, so. No, because, you know, those guys are Paulinian or Gentiles and they don't really have the option of inheriting the earth. Right. That's primarily why none of them really care about Hermes. But anyway, we're looking here and we see from 2014, it says a few days, so that takes us to 2017, maybe even the early parts of 2018. Mm -hmm. I think it was in about January or February when we designated our channel as Hermes Academy, even though we had did a few classes back to the fall of 2017. It was actually in 2018 with, when the father put it on my heart to actually change the entire channel around. I almost changed the name of the channel to Hermes Academy, but I decided to leave it as Coach in the Fight. Mm -hmm. Only because Hermes Academy was supposed to be a bigger deal. You were supposed to have different chapters of Hermes Academy all over YouTube. Yeah. Coach in the Fight was really only supposed to be one chapter of this bigger university. Mm -hmm. But look, look at verse 84. Okay. Similitudes 8 and 84. And having showed me all these things, he said, I will show thee the rest in a few days. So here we are. We're in verse 32 and verse 33. He's taken us from 2014 to 2018. But verse 84 is the last verse in that chapter, and he's saying that he's going to show us the rest in three days or in, in a few days. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to take us to the year 2021. 2021, okay. Right. How does that add up? Well, you were given the rod in 2014. Mm -hmm. In 2017, the rod was inspected. Mm -hmm. But what did he do with the rod for those whose rod was, wasn't right? For those whose rod was not right, um, they were replanted, right? Yeah, he planted them, put them, you know, in, with, back in the, he put them in the ground and he put a whole lot of water on them. Yeah, they were given another opportunity. Given another opportunity. Mm -hmm. So that's what he's talking about these few days. So after 2017, 2018, those rods were given another opportunity to get right so that they could go into the tower. Right. Mm -hmm. So in other words, those people whose rods was right in 2017, they went off into the tower. Yeah. But us that our rods weren't right, mm -hmm. we were replanted. 
and then they will be inspected again here coming up here in the year 2021. We better have our ducks in a row then. We better be getting them ducks <laughs> in a row. <laughs> because, you know, this tower, is, it looks... It, it's it, almost complete. It looks like it, it looks like it's just about complete. Let's mm -hmm. go on here in a few more verses and you may be even more convinced of that. Now, we're looking it's still in similar to 8, or that verse we just looked at, but we're comparing it to what we see in similar to 9. You okay. want to tell us about similar to 9? Similar to 9, what happens? What happens in similar to 9? That's with the stones. Oh, okay. So the stones, um, I always get them mixed up with the rods. But the stones is what actually is being carried into the tower to make up the tower. Um, but with the stones... Some of them are scattered to different places. Um, some are taken to this tower, but some are scattered. And I don't remember if any of the stones... Yeah, some of them were went... He went back and got some of the other ones. I was going to say, are they like the rods who were replanted? But some of the stones were taken... Though they were far away from the tower, he went well, back and got it. Joe, you remember, well, when it came to the imperfect stones, they were, some of them were set beside the tower. Right. Some of them, you know, were kicked far from the tower, not to be used again. Some yeah. were even, you know, burned up. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the stones who had minor imperfections, I'll say, were set beside the tower so that it could be corrected later. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, if you would, read verse... 47 out of similar to 9. And after a few days, we came into the same place where we had sat before. And he said unto me, Let us go unto the tower, for the Lord of it will come and examine it. So, previous to this verse, we've been hearing about this tower. Um, like Stacy said, it's similar to what we would have read over in Visions 3, where he's given him a parable of what this tower shaped temple would actually be like he's actually showing him how it's constructed what it's made out of talk to him about the angels that are carrying these stones and putting them into the tower and even these virgins um who are actually having to clean these stones up and make them perfect right mm -hmm. but here it is after he's put all of these stones into the tower he's telling him that after a few days that they're going to come in and they're going to examine this tower and those few days you're equating that to how many years three years three years mm-hmm so once again whereas before we were talking about rods and how the rods were inspected in 2017 well the stones appear to be inspected in 2017 too yeah mm -hmm. because you know there's the it's just really two separate parables one is talking about rods and one is talking about stones but it's really talking about the same thing yeah mm -hmm. it's talking about the exact same thing and so we see here that it's, it's actually giving them the same timeline that in 2017 our rods and our stones were inspected and those of us that weren't right were replanted were set beside this tower right. for until we were actually able to be chiseled away, our bad spots were chiseled away, giving us the opportunity to go into the tower. And the bad spots would be like those um, characteristics of the 12 women. Yeah, like mine, my, my stone had clefts in it, which means I was holding grudges against people who had done stuff to me. Right. Mm -hmm. No. I remember, uh, well, you often talked about it on your videos how that was one of your stones that had to be uh, reshaped and chiseled away yeah because I, I like I said I thought I was supposed to that somebody you know do something to you you know it's of course we're told to turn the other cheek but when you actually have to do that you know it's a different story it's one thing to be reading about that in the scripture and say oh yeah I'm gonna turn the other cheek but it's another thing to be getting slapped and not hit the person back Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was holding grudges. You yeah, know? and I would say one of my stones was um, a major stone for me was sadness and sorrow because 
the reason I say that is because I was constantly looking back as to what people had done to me. Yeah, and so. it always made me feel sor sorrowful. It always made, made me feel sad. And it always caused me to blame others for me being sad and sorrowful. Yeah. Yeah. So you had similar similar flaws. And we, there was other ones. But, you know, mm -hmm. like we say, you guys want to go in and check out this book called The Shepherd of Hermes because all of the stones got flaws. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you were in the tower by now, you'd probably know it. Mm -hmm. You know, and so if you aren't in this tower right now, it's because it's probably because your stone has flaws in it. And so you'll want to go into the Shepherd of Hermes and read over this information, you know, to get rid of some of these flaws and these stains. Not yeah. all of them are hard. Yeah. You know, and it actually turns out to be a better lifestyle that you will live after you get rid of these stains and flaws. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But notice how in verse 47 that he's talking about the Lord will come and examine the tower. Yeah. Um, so that means after I remember they were saying that, you know, let's clean it up because he's coming to examine the tower. And after he examined it, were there any more um, repairs to be done to it? Yeah. You remember he whacked it. Oh, yeah. He whacked the tower. Yeah. So this whacking of this tower could have very well been in 2017. I hope it's not in 2021. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I would hope that, you know, our tower, our stone has, you know, gotten all of the beatings it going to get. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! I don't want to be whacked anymore. Yeah, yeah, and but if you remember, but if you remember all of the stuff we went through in 2017 to 2018, you know, it was probably the toughest year for us. Mhm. Mm you know, things started to get better in 2019. Yeah. So I so this this examination by the Lord was actually in 2017. Yeah. Mhm. Mm and so that's what it's talking about, you know, these few days. And it's important to understand how it's using a few days there instead of three years, because we're really talking about three and a half years. We're not talking about exactly three years, but mm -hmm. it's actually three and a half years. We're going to see here in the next slide. Okay. Because it's talking about Revelation chapter 12. And how it relates to uh, the Shepherd of Hermes. Okay, let's see that. Well, we've talked about all of these verses here before. You know, in in summary, um, in uh, Visions 3, we were told that in 2017, Hermes' ministry would start. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, that's what our ministry started in, in the fall of 2017. He was told he was given a vision of the tribulation, which we understand the tribulation started in 2017. Mm -hmm. You know, that was kind of like the Rosh Hashanah moment that you read about in the book called Gad the Seer, where you have that 10 days of awe that started. Right. And uh, also in Visions 4, you know, Hermes was told about the... Um, speaking to the saints and carrying this message to the saints. And that was about the time we actually started uh, teaching it. Teaching it online, you know, mm -hmm. even created an online ministry based on the Shepherd of Hermes. And then in similar to 8, um, we saw that the rods were inspected in 2017. And we were found, we personally were found to have had flaws. We definitely had flaws. And in similitudes 9, we saw that the stones were also examined in 2017. Yeah, and I just want to say that, you know, I'm grateful that we did have the opportunity to be inspected and that our flaws were found out. Uh, because just imagine if we did not know about the book of Hermes and we were not working on our flaws and we never even had the opportunity to go into the tower. Yeah, so what that essentially boils down to is that you wouldn't have a chance of making it into the kingdom of heaven. Talking about heaven on earth that we will be able to enjoy after the tribulation. Yeah, so that um, I say that to say... When you do read The Shepherd of Hermes and you do see yourself in these things, don't look at it as a bad thing. Look at it as an opportunity to change those things. Yeah, it definitely. And that brings us to the next uh, portion, and that's talking about Revelation chapter 12 and verse 6, how it's talking about that 1,260 days. Mm -hmm. That also corresponded with the um, 2017, the fall of 2017. Okay. That's actually... 
that period between the time that the rod and the stones were inspected and the completion of the tower is what that's talking about. Mm, all right. I'm interesting to, interested to see how that relates. Yeah. So what it's talking about is in 2017, like you read over there in the book of Revelation, chapter 12 and verse 6, how you had the bride that is called away into the wilderness. Well, those people who were prepared would have went on into the tower. Of course, we're talking about in a spiritual sense, mm -hmm. but those of us who weren't prepared, we actually went into the wilderness. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. Where we've been there for about three years now. Right. Starting at about Shemini Esteret, or the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles in 2017. This 1,260 days takes you exactly to the Feast of Passover in the year 2021. Hmm. Okay. You know, so that's kind of, you know, similar to. The way the 12 disciples went through their training with the Messiah back there in 26 AD. Mm -hmm. Well, that's exactly what we've gone through. The 144,000 plus that multitude that no man can number. Mm -hmm. We actually started our wilderness period and have been walking with the Messiah since 2017. And we're scheduled to be finished with this training and this tower completion in the year 2021. Yeah, there's a lot of, well, I'm not going to say a lot, but there are many people who are saying that their wilderness training or they were put in a wilderness situation around or about that time. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, like we said, you know, we give a lot of our testimony and I'll say it one more time. It's not because we're unique or different or special in any way. You know, there's every time we do this, there's going to be five, six, seven people who are going to say, hey, that happened to me. Yeah, it would be interesting for people to, you know, actually, you know, like you did, write it out and start thinking about what was going on with me about this time and see if it coincides with some of the things that uh, some of the dates that match up with scripture. Yeah, because, you know, our father is orchestrating this even in our unawares. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's look at some of these verses that support this. This is also in similitudes uh, chapter nine and verse 61. If you read that verse. When he had said thus unto me, he added. Let us go, and after three days we will return, and I will put these stones being cleansed into the tower. So here you are in 2017. Your stone was inspected. It was found to have flaws. It was set beside the tower, and it was given the opportunity to be shaped and cleaned and polished up so that it could be put into the tower. And here it is three years later, or three, yeah, three years later, and he's talking about actually putting this stone into the tower. Hmm. It just makes me automatically go back and think about some of the things that were going on. What well, actually makes me think about the shaping and the chiseling that we had to go through. You know, those were some very hard days uh, being um, talked about, being put out of churches, being, you know, a lot of things that you never would have thought your family and friends would have done to you. Yeah. But. But like they you said, were for a reason. The father was orchestrating it only for our good because, you know, a lot of those ordeals that happened got rid of pride. Yeah. You know, it humbled us. Yeah. Uh, it took away, you know, the sadness. It caused us to to go into a relationship of constantly praying and and things like that. So, you know, though they you seem bad, they actually wasn't. Yeah. And then you think about how it took away your materialism. Yeah. And you brought know? you down to simplicity, which yeah. is one of the characteristics that we need. Yeah, so, you know, that 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 cleansing process that we've been, and it's not finished yet. We still got a few days of it, you know, left. That cleansing process is actually changing us into the people that he will have us to be. So how long, and I don't know if this is off the subject, how long did you say we had left? <laughs> Till this, the way I understand it, this 1,260 days will be up. It Passover of 2021. Passover 2021. I got a few more things I got to be worked on, but I don't want the chiseling. But you better you know. work on them yourself. <laughs> <laughs>
You better fix them yourself. <laughs> That's all I can say. You better get to fixing it because they're they going to get fixed in one way or the other. It's going to get fixed. Or you won't be going into the or tower. You won't be going into the tower. Yeah, you know, I'm pretty serious about that tower. I might have to pull my own chisel out and start whacking on you a few times. Yeah, I was I was about to say bring on the chiseling, but oh my goodness. Be careful what you ask for. <laughs> That's right. That's why I'm not saying it. Be careful it. what you ask for. All right, let's go on to verse 62. For all these that are about the tower must be cleansed, lest the master of the house chance to come upon the sudden and find those which are about the tower unclean. Yeah, so this is talking about the the time from 2017 to 2021, how the shepherd called the you know, he's called the shepherd of Hermas, had the responsibility of cleaning us up. And like you talked about, you know, we this chiseling process has been going on and we can look back over, you know, a lot of the things that have been fixed in our life ever since. Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot of praise the Lord. We pray that they are permanently fixed. <laughs> oh, so. Oh, my goodness. Sometimes, you know, people come down and say things and you'll be like, oh, my goodness. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whereas before, you know, you used to fight back. You know, I, I ain't let nobody talk no junk to me. You know, I, like I said, I used to think I was supposed to fight back. You right. know what I mean? That was my, my thing. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm a warrior. I'll fight you in a minute. But 63. When, therefore, we came at the three days to the tower, he said unto me, let us examine all these stones and let us see which of them may go into the building i answered sir let us see so here it is the finishing of the the tower i could have put more verses in here you know you guys go in and check out you know this the rest of this book um this chapter nine it, it goes on for another 300 or so verses talking about this stuff but he is being told here as far as the timing of it, it is at the end of these three years that all of the stones are being placed into the tower. And you remember what happens next. They actually start cleansing the tower. They wash the tower down. He, down he come yeah. in with that slick lime mm -hmm. and polish the tower up and make right. it look like it was all one stone mm -hmm. and make it perfected. All before what? All before the master came. Um to inspect it again. All oh, before the master comes to inspect his tower. We're talking about the Messiah coming and actually inspect his tower. And this is what a lot of people are talking about when they're talking about the return of Christ. Yeah, and another thing that I'm just thinking about is they said... He's going to be kind of angry if this building ain't what it should be. If he ain't right. You know, if, it's, if, it, if what they say, if the approaches are dirty. Right. No, nah, mm -hmm. he's going to be perfect. This tower is going to be perfect. Yeah. You know, so, you know, we just praise the Father that we have more time in order to, you know, get this right. So, again, you guys, go over, check out The Shepherd of Hermes. You got the uh, book you can read. Um, you even got an audio book that you can listen to on YouTube. There's mm -hmm. links to all of that down in the description of this video. And we also have um, a playlist of classes that we've done just about every verse out of the entire book. Yeah, that you guys can follow along with us as we learn, as well as you guys, to um, the teachings of the Book of yeah. Shepherd of Christ. Between, between, uh, between the two of us, we probably got 30 years of experience with this book and probably have read it about 50 times between the both of us. So when we went in and actually did that class, um, that ministry, following the instructions as we were told to do, you know, we imparted a lot of our own understanding from this scripture. And so you should get a lot out of that playlist. So go over and check it out. Mm -hmm. All right. With that, I guess we're going to close this video out. Yeah, I would say a lot of, the, you know, what I really like about it is that um, you have the what we would call the receipts to back up everything that you're saying, how the days and the testimony of our lives are. Um, going together with the days that yeah of the scripture yeah. yeah best thing I like about it is you know we didn't we didn't have to do it ourselves yeah you know we we didn't have to get on some type of schedule or timeline remember this or remember that we look back and we say the father did it for us mm -hmm. you know he is the author and the finisher of our faith mm-hmm yeah
That don't say shalom. Shalom, everybody.